Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As you know, this is Communion Sabbath. I want you to keep your Bibles open to Luke chapter 22. It's going to be a very short message. I say that, but we're really going to work. Okay, Luke chapter 22. The title of this message is Last Wish. Think about it. You come to the end of your life. Or if you've been around anybody who has come to the end of theirs, it's kind of important that you hear their last words and that if you're close to them, you're able to help them fulfill their last wishes. Isn't that why we have our wills, last will and testament, to make sure that after we're gone, what our last wish was, <coughs> Make sure that it's done, done properly, and done according to what we wanted. Have you ever thought of what Jesus' last wish was? You know his last words as he was hanging on the cross, but what was his last wish? It tells you here in the text that we just read, it says, It is my desire. What does that word desire mean? It's my hope, it's my strong passion, my strong hope, my strong desire, that I eat this with you. Now what was going to happen after they got done eating this Last Supper? Here, why is it called the Last Supper? So here you go, you find out what his last wish was. His last wish was that he would be surrounded by his disciples, that he could share this meal with them, that he could continue to just Open their minds to what God's truth really was. So when you come to the communion service, come to this service prepared with the mindset that Jesus had hoped his disciples would have had that night. Unfortunately, most of us come to this service prepared with the exact mindset the disciples had. Not ready, not prepared, not having any understanding of what this actually means how important it is. But do you realize that verse 15, Jesus says, if you look at the New King James, it says with fervent, but that word fervent is a supplied word. So with desire, now, you ever wonder why he says this twice? With desire, I have desired. That's why they put fervent in there. Because they added the word twice. With desire I have desired to eat this meal with you. That's letting you know that what is going on here, this is something very, very important to Jesus. That right now, this is where his total focus is at. He is here in the moment. His mind's not somewhere else. He is in the here and the now. And he wanted his disciples to be with him then as well. Fully engaged. Fully understanding what was actually about to take place. Because they had to be prepared for the arrest, the trial, the crucifixion, and his death. And they were not prepared for any of it. Now, can you imagine being with Jesus for three over three years, coming to the end, and, and from the beginning, he was training them and teaching them for this end. And they come to the end, and they were not prepared. But listen, God was faithful. God had promised that he would never leave them and never forsake them, the disciples. And he never did. Even though the disciples forsaked their master, the master and his father never forsook them. So listen, as you partake of the communion service today, have that mindset in you. And know for a fact that God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never let you go unless you choose to let Him go. Amen. Take out your bulletins. You have your bulletins? Did you guys get that little insert that's in that bulletin? 
Ricky, you put that insert together, correct? They're always good. This is a really good one as well. Last week, we looked at the last final chapter of 1 Peter. And Peter had counsel for the leadership of the church. And I asked a question to the leadership of the church, why are you here, why do you do this? Look at the responsibility that is given to the leadership of the church and also that is given to you as individual believers in Jesus Christ. Take that insert and look at the third paragraph and look at the last, probably the fourth sentence where it starts at the gospel of Christ. You guys got that? It says, the gospel of Christ alone can offer pardon. In order to stand forgiven, the sinner must what? Exercise. Exercise repentance towards God, whose law has been transgressed. In faith in Christ, his atoning sacrifice. Without true repentance, there can be no true conversion. Does that make sense to you guys? This is a scary thing, this next sentence. Many are deceived here, and too often their entire experience proves to be a what? This is why so many who are joined to the church have never been joined to Christ. Brothers and sisters, if this is your experience this morning, I beg you, plead with you, join yourself to Christ. Church membership is never going to save you. Amen. Church membership will not get you in heaven. Tithing is not going to get you there. Keeping the Sabbath is not going to get you there. What you put in your mouth or don't put in your mouth is not going to get you there. Amen. What is going to get you there is total dependence upon Jesus Christ. Amen. All those other things I mentioned are important. But they're only important if you're connected to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus gives them their importance. In and of themselves, they can do nothing for you. Can the law save you? No. But is the law just and holy and good? Yes. yes. But we are transgressors. And so we have offended the law and the lawgiver. And so that doesn't make the law bad. It doesn't make it the law's fault. It is our fault. You are responsible for your actions, your choices, and your sin. It's nobody's fault but yours. Hence, it's also nobody's place but yours to come to Jesus Christ in repentance, to know Him, to take His blood and His body that was poured out for you, and to accept that salvation, and to allow Him to create in you a new person. Amen. Amen. That, brothers and sisters, is what communion is about. And as we go into the foot washing ceremony, uh, the men will be going into the fellowship hall. The women will be going out to the what color door is that? Blue door. The blue door. Um, when we are done, listen, ladies and men, if you want to take hymnals with you, by all means, go ahead and do that. When you come back, please sit in every other pew so that the deacons can serve us. Let's bow our heads and do a prayer, and then we'll dismiss to the foot washing. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to be a part of this communion service. Father, what my prayer is, is that we will do this with clean hands and a worthy spirit. Not that we're worthy, but that we have put our faith and trust in your Son, Jesus Christ, and therefore you make us worthy. Amen. Father, help us to realize and understand that it is only in a full relationship with Jesus Christ that we have salvation. Amen. I pray that everyone here will have that relationship. Amen. That they will surrender to Jesus and know the joy of serving you. This I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.